The following program is furnished by The Truth About Your Future, LLC. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station. This information is education and not financial advice. Consult a financial advisor before investing. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman is brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. And by Global X ETFs, dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. And by Edelman Financial Engines. Rick Edelman is a board member, consultant, shareholder, and client of EFE. But EFE is unaffiliated and has no say over the content of the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. This is where technology, innovation, and personal finance come together. This is the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. And now your host, Rick Edelman. Welcome to the program. Rick Edelman here. Coming up in this hour, a half billion dollars for Bob Dylan's songbook. Managing your money in today's economic environment. The growth of the metaverse. A conversation with SEC Commissioner Caroline Crenshaw free savings accounts for first graders, Gucci getting into NFTs, and Gene's Word of the Week. We all know the mess the world is in, so we're going to change it up this week, and we're going to talk about the fact that the world's going digital. That includes the music industry and major retailers. DJ Justin Blau has teamed up with an electronic musician goes by the name of Diplo, They created a song and sold 20% of the streaming royalties to fans via NFTs. Snoop Dogg sold an NFT attached to his latest album and generated $40 million in sales in five days. DJ Steve Aoki says he's made more money selling NFTs than he did from 10 years of selling records. And at Universal and Sony, they paid $500 million to buy Bob Dylan's songbook. And just as I predicted they were going to do, they are now getting ready to sell Bob Dylan NFTs. Spotify is going to add blockchain technology and NFTs to its streaming service to boost artists' earnings. Snoop Dogg's a prominent NFT collector. Kings of Leon and Grimes have sold NFTs of their music. Warner and Universal have forged partnerships with NFT projects, including a virtual band featuring characters from the Bored Ape Yacht Club, a very popular series of NFTs. Meanwhile, Cult and Rain, which is a high-end maker of sneakers, sold almost 1,200 pairs of real sneakers and then paired each of them with an NFT. The total price per pair for both the real and virtual sneakers for a pair of sneakers. The digital luxury market is going to be $55 billion by the end of this decade. That's according to Morgan Stanley. That'll be 10% of all the revenues in the entire luxury industry. Gucci sold 400 digital versions of its famous handbags for $6 each. That sparked a frenzy, and online gamers started trading the Gucci NFTs. The price eventually hit $4,000 for a single handbag. That's more than what the real-world handbags cost. So guess what Gucci did? They sold another set of NFTs, 500 Super Guccis. They didn't sell them for 6 bucks. They sold them for 5000 and they immediately sold out. Burberry created a collection of Sharky B characters for 300 bucks a piece. They sold out in 30 seconds. They now trade for $1,000. Dolce & Gabbana produced the Genesis collection. They collectively sold for nearly $6 bucks. And this includes the Impossible Tiara, a virtual crown with digital jewels. It sold for 100 Ethereum, about $300,000. $18 billion worth of NFTs were traded last year, and this is just the start. Mark Zuckerberg says NFTs are coming to Instagram, which Facebook owns, in a big way over the next several months. You're going to be able to bring NFTs in, and eventually you're going to be able to mint things within the Instagram environment. Zuckerberg says he's going to turn Instagram into a shopping platform. Citigroup says the metaverse economy could be $13 trillion by the end of the decade, 
with 5 billion unique visitors. There's only 7 billion of us on the whole planet, and they're talking about 5 billion engaging in the metaverse over the next eight years. Citigroup says a third of the digital economy is going to shift to virtual worlds and then expand 25%. And guess who's getting in on this action right now? Ukraine. In their efforts to repel the Russian invasion, to raise the money they need to fund their military and to feed their people, they're selling NFTs, all of it inspired by the invasion. The proceeds are supporting the army and civilians. Each NFT is inspired by a news headline or a social media post tied to the invasion. The proceeds are going to the Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation. Yeah, I wonder if the United States has a Department of Digital Transformation. I think Ukraine's ahead of us. An NFT of the Ukrainian flag recently sold for nearly $7 million, and the proceeds are supporting the armed forces of Ukraine. Meanwhile, there's BNY Mellon, the oldest bank in the United States, founded by Alexander Hamilton. They are now the primary custodian for assets backing the USDC stablecoin. It's a mix of cash and U.S. treasuries. $52 billion of this stablecoin are in circulation, and Bank of New York Mellon is the primary custodian. They're also exploring opportunities to custody the crypto digital asset itself. BlackRock's also exploring how to serve clients with digital assets. CEO Larry Fink confirmed that BlackRock, the world's largest money manager with over $11 trillion in assets, says that BlackRock is going to do this. Larry Fink used to be a naysayer about crypto, and he's the latest naysayer to change his mind. Last July, Larry Fink said he wasn't seeing much demand for digital assets. He now says the Ukraine war is changing everything. He just wrote his annual shareholder letter, and he said, quote, a global digital payment system can enhance the settlement of international transactions while reducing the risk of money laundering and corruption. Digital currencies can also help bring down the costs of cross-border payments. Larry Fink says digital currencies could get a boost from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He said, quote, The war will prompt countries to re-evaluate their currency dependencies. A global digital payment system can enhance the settlement of international transactions while reducing the risk of money laundering and corruption. With all this client interest, BlackRock is studying how it can make use of digital currencies, stablecoins, and blockchain technology. A year ago, Fink said BlackRock clients had shown little interest in this. Looks like that has all changed. In fact, Goldman Sachs released a survey found that investors are still very bullish about crypto. 51% of the clients that Goldman Sachs surveyed have crypto exposure, a 20% increase over last year. And more than half say they're going to increase their holdings over the next year or two. 32% say they're going to significantly increase their investments in digital assets. And then there's something called Ether Rock. It's a series of clip art rocks painted different colors, minted on a blockchain. They sell for an average of $600,000 as NFTs. But recently, one owner wanted to sell his rock for 444 Ether, about $1.2 million. But instead of listing it on the digital marketplace for 444 Ether, he listed it for 444 Way. Ether and Way are related, kind of like dollars and pennies or in this case, fractions of pennies. It takes a quintillion way to make one ether. In other words, 444 ether worth 1.2 million, but 444 way are worth less than a penny. Instead of selling his NFT for a million bucks, he sold it for less than a penny. Demonstrating the risks that continue to exist in the world of digital assets, why you either need to be A, careful, or B, working with a financial advisor who can be careful for you. And there's this. The IRS says Bitcoin is property. It's not currency, and it's not a security. Comes along Evan and Shira Rosenberg. They're suing Home Site Insurance and Geico and the American Family Insurance Group. Back in June of 2021, their computer was hacked. 
and the hackers stole their crypto worth $750,000. The Rosenbergs went to the police, and then they filed a claim on their homeowner's insurance policy. Their policy covers theft of personal property owned or used by an insured anywhere in the world. The insurance company paid the claim of $200. And that's why the Rosenbergs are filing a lawsuit, arguing that the crypto was worth three quarters of a million, and that is how much Geico and the others should have paid them, not just 200 bucks. We'll have to see how this lawsuit gets resolved. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future. Hey, I really want to help you get a deep dive into the key personal finance topics that matter most. So this year, I'm teaching four master classes, and you can watch all four of them for free. The first master class, The Truth About Crypto, just like the title of my new number one bestseller. My next master classes will be in August, October, and November. They'll all be online for free, and you'll be able to watch them whenever you want and as often as you want. Sign up now for my first master class at thetruthayf.com. It's thetruthayf.com. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future. This is a call to the self-starters, to the self-made, and the self-sufficient. It's time to declare a new kind of independence, because Edelman Financial Engines is here to provide tailored investment solutions for your kind of wealthy. You should expect more from your wealth advisors. Our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize winning research, and our planners don't sell products to earn commissions. And because we're here for those who question the answers, we model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. So no matter where you're going next, see what we can build for you. Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash T-A-Y-F to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines. Built for those who built themselves. Allow us to introduce you to Jeremiah, an ordinary person who helped shape the future by putting his money behind the right ideas. Jeremiah's always been a numbers guy, from his days competing in the high school math league to now as the teacher who leads it. Jeremiah is also accessing the companies who are driving environmental innovations for the next generation by investing in Invesco QQQ. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100, which goes to show you don't have to be a helio seismologist to help push progress forward. Become an agent of innovation. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Visit Invesco.com for a prospectus with this information. Read it carefully before investing. Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? There's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, symbol BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future. I'm Rick Edelman. Very happy to welcome onto the program SEC Commissioner Caroline Crenshaw. 
She was an SEC staff attorney for many years before becoming an SEC commissioner. She's also a graduate of Harvard with a law degree magna cum laude from the University of Minnesota. And by the way, my favorite part, Commissioner Crenshaw is also a captain in the United States Army Reserve JAG Corps. Commissioner, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for your service to our nation. Of course. Uh, Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And I I will just start quickly before we get into anything else with the standard disclaimer that I must make as part of my job. Uh, The views I express are are my own and don't necessarily uh, represent the views of the commission or the staff of the commission. Um, But with that out of the way, it's really great to be here. So thank you. You've written and spoken about crypto for as long as you've been an SEC commissioner. So how would you describe yourself? Pro-crypto, anti-crypto, something in between? I am extremely supportive of blockchain technology's potential and really have been incredibly impressed by the level of research and activity that has been dedicated to its development. I think there's a lot of potential in that area. I think there's a lot of ways that we can make uh, improvements to the securities industry, to the financial sector. But As someone who took an oath to protect investors, as you noted, and to ensure fair and efficient markets, I certainly do have some questions. You know, those aspects of crypto, of DeFi, of NFTs or non-fungible tokens that seem to involve an investor exchanging something of value with the expectation of a financial return based on someone else's effort. Those types of offerings may fall within the SEC's jurisdiction. And so we're going to be looking at that. I certainly think we here at the SEC and investors do need significantly more information. And so that's really the crux of it, isn't it? Because this is a global asset, you know, crypto trades around the world, 24-7, 365. And a lot of these companies, these platforms, these coins and tokens, they were created, they exist, they trade elsewhere. And if they're trading outside the U.S., the SEC clearly could struggle to claim jurisdiction over them. And this is why it's so important, isn't it, that investors pay attention to where are you doing this? Who are you doing business with? Who's the counterparty? Because if they are a offshore entity, if they are outside the U.S., if they're with an organization that has chosen not to register with the SEC, then the SEC's consumer protections really aren't there for you. There are a lot, though, who have registered, who are complying with all the rules the SEC has established. So doesn't it kind of argue that if you're going to engage in crypto, which is, let's face it, risky enough as it is, that you can at least use a registered organization to somewhat reduce some of those risks and give you the engagement of the SEC itself? Yeah, I think that's critically important. Um, I think registration serves absolutely fundamental aspects of our market. Without that, it's very hard to hold people accountable. Uh, It also sets a baseline of disclosures and it creates an institutional discipline to focus on compliance and just a continuing recognition that investors have specific rights that must be respected. Some projects do voluntarily disclose info on their websites and social media on the blockchain itself, but you think that's not enough. I'd say some projects are more transparent than others. But even those projects that do disclose information about themselves or their experience, their partners and customers, without registering, there isn't necessarily anyone to verify that any of their claims are true. The blockchain is very transparent as to certain limited types of data. So for example, time and amount of transactions and the addresses of those who transacted all perfectly transparent, can't disagree with that. But it doesn't reveal the identities of those who are transacting or for that matter, any other arrangements or connections they may have off chain. And I think it's just a reminder that compliance is more than a legal obligation. It's a market good that improves confidence and resilience and allows for more accurate pricing. We're talking with SEC Commissioner Caroline Crenshaw. Two final questions for you, Commissioner. One, which is, I think, the most common one you get, uh, which is one that we hear all the time from folks who are interested in investing in crypto, uh, is a Bitcoin ETF. 
Uh, it has eluded us to date. There isn't one on the market. The SEC has had a number of applications but hasn't said yes to any of them as yet. Tell us your thoughts about the potential for that. Is there going to be one day a, a Bitcoin ETF or should investors just stop asking? I can't talk about too much the internal deliberations uh, of the Securities and Exchange Commission. So I will just say that we will have to see what all the applications say. And one final question for you. Uh, What is it you're optimistic about in the area of crypto and what is it you're pessimistic about? Sure. Some optimism. I think um, removing intermediaries has the potential to reduce errors and to lower costs for retail investors. I think there's a lot of research and development efforts underway, and the potential is there for this to really involve and improve elements of investing or commerce in ways that we haven't even yet considered. That's a really critical part of this. I don't know where this is going, um, but I think there's really some interesting and cool opportunities. It may be that we've not yet settled on crypto's killer app, uh, but, but the lessons being learned today, I think, will allow us to better harness that when it appears. Uh, So I think those are things I'm optimistic about. I would say the concerns are what we've already talked about. So unless and until I think we can have a market where people have some basic information about these tokens, these platforms, these projects, we're not going to be able to evolve and grow as much as we would like, because there's always going to be that question about fraud, about the accuracy and to to really get the market adoption. uh, I think we need some really basic fundamental protections like the SEC has put in place for every other security. That's Caroline Crenshaw, Commissioner with the Securities and Exchange Commission, here on The Truth About Your Future. Commissioner Crenshaw and I actually spoke for over 15 minutes. If you would like to listen, watch, or read the entire conversation, just go to thetruthayf.com. Commissioner, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you again. It was a pleasure. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future. The Truth About Your Future is sponsored by Global X ETFs. The financial services landscape is shifting before our eyes. Whether paying for groceries, applying for a mortgage, or even buying an NFT, almost anything you could imagine is at your fingertips. As these transactions become more and more seamless, it's easy to forget the innovative technologies making it all possible. Disruptions like fintech, blockchain, and yes, digital assets aren't just pixels on a screen. They're led by forward-thinking companies helping shape the future of finance. And you might want to consider where they fit in your portfolio. But where to start? At Global X ETFs, we offer a range of thematic investing solutions targeting these financial disruptions, in addition to other exponential technologies like lithium batteries, artificial intelligence, and more. Explore our insights and full product lineup at GlobalXETFs.com or ask your financial advisor. That's GlobalXETFs.com. This message is brought to you by Charles Schwab. No matter what tomorrow brings, some things won't change. Like Schwab's commitment to see the world through clients' eyes. That commitment is why Schwab is always here for clients with clear guidance and committed service to help maintain focus on achieving long-term goals. So whatever happens today, Schwab remains invested in you. Visit schwab.com to learn how Schwab is ready to help. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman, sponsored by Choice. Choice is changing the way Americans save for retirement by making it possible to invest in Bitcoin, crypto, and other alternative assets inside your IRA. That's right. Whether you open a deductible or a Roth IRA with Choice, you can invest in Bitcoin and 22 other digital assets in your retirement account. You can also buy stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, gold, real estate, and more, all in a single retirement account. There's no hidden fees or account minimums, just more control over your retirement savings. And Choice makes it ridiculously easy to combine all of your old retirement accounts with a rollover concierge service. So if you've switched jobs in the last few years and have been putting off rolling over your old 401k, make sure you check out Choice. Head on over to retirewithchoice.com slash Rick. That's retirewithchoice.com slash Rick.
If you're listening to the truth about your future, what about your children's future? Well, in Los Angeles, they're trying to make that a little bit better in America's second largest school district. That's the Los Angeles County School System. They've given every first grader, 44,000 students, a free college savings account, filled it with $50. Families can add to these accounts, and if they do, Los Angeles will match up to $25 Every year, that's 75 bucks for first graders and an extra 25 bucks a year after that. If the student leaves Los Angeles, moves out, they forfeit the money and any family contributions are returned. Kind of golden handcuffs to stay put, right? This is not the first city or state to engage in this activity. Oklahoma began doing this 15 years ago with newborns. Randomly selected, they got $1,000. And the studies over the last 15 years have shown that families that got that money were more likely to save for college. Their kids were three times more likely to graduate from college. Now, San Francisco, Maine, Pennsylvania, New York City all have programs or are planning them to help prepare children financially for their future that they're going to face. Some people argue that this is kind of a stepping stone toward universal basic income, UBI, and others are very concerned about that notion. But quite frankly, we have to recognize we've got a massive retirement security gap in America. We have a $4 trillion gap. That's the amount of money that we are lacking compared to how much money we're going to be needing for America's workers in their 50s plus. So the more we can get people to save for the future and the earlier we can get them to save, the more likely they're going to accumulate the money that's needed. This is the whole basis of my proposal, RISE, the Retirement Income Security for Everyone proposal, which is designed to give every baby in America a block of money that they can't touch until retirement. Unlike all of these other programs that are out there, which are government funded, meaning taxpayer supported, my proposal wouldn't cost the government a dime. No taxpayer funding of any kind. It is a totally self-funded proposal. And if you'd like to learn more about RISE and my proposal for eliminating poverty in retirement for all future generations, just go to the special website I've created for it, wecanrise.com. I'm Rick Edelman. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future. One of the big questions is how should we be managing our money in an environment like this? Let's face it, 2022 is an economic environment unlike anything we've seen, frankly, since 2008. What do we do now? Well, to help us figure all that out, I'm very happy to welcome onto the program a good friend of mine, Todd Hillstead. He's Executive Director of Financial Planning at Edelman Financial Engines. So let's break this out into three separate categories, okay? What you need to do now, but the answer to that question depends on where you're at in life. When we do surveys across the country of retirees and we ask, what is your number one regret? The number one thing people say is, I wish I'd started saving sooner. And tied to that, we know from industry data, the average U.S. worker starts investing in their 401k at age 37. They're squandering almost 20 years of contributions because they figure, I'm young, I can't really afford it, I can't contemplate retiring, and they just delay it and they put it off, ending up with regret that they didn't start sooner. And and it's so true, you know, and I often talk with people that are now in their 50s or 60s, and life will come at them hard. So we often try to encourage people that are just starting out or new, not only do you save into your 401k and retirement accounts, and by the way, this is coming from a friend, you won't like me now, but you'll like me in 40 or 50 years, save till it hurts. Don't just save if the match is four or 5%, save, hey, I'm going to get my full match. And if someone hasn't told this to you by now, it's nice that you hear it now. You need to be saving at least 10, 15, sometimes 20% just to maintain your same standard of living down the road. Um, So save until it hurts. But the other thing that you need to be doing, or at least consider doing, is build up this cash reserve. Don't treat your retirement account as this piggy bank of what you tap when life throws you a curveball. Start to set aside some money every single time you get paid into an account that's not in your checking or savings. It's something that's essentially untouchable for emergencies only. Let's talk about mid-career. Folks in their 40s, uh, early 50s, they've got maybe four or $500,000 saved by now in retirement accounts. 
They're watching massive market volatility. Anybody who has looked at their 401k statement lately or gone online to see the current value has seen a remarkable decline in value, 10, 20, 30 percent, depending on the account's holdings. What do you say to these folks? Well, first of all, you've accumulated a lot of money and it feels like the stakes are a little bit higher. What you have to do, number one, is check where your head's at and check where the source of information that, that is kind of coming into you, where's that coming from? Because it can often really throw you off kilter to where you make some really big, sometimes negative investment decisions continue to contribute. Often you might even want to consider contributing more. Investing is one of the only places where when prices are down, a lot of people consider, gosh, maybe I won't continue investing. You go to the store and you see a discount on your favorite pair of shoes, or your favorite line of clothing, you're probably going to buy two in two different colors. The same thing rings true with investing. See if you can contribute more. And then one thing that is often talked about, Rick, on your radio show in particular, and in all of your books, is rebalancing. As you're contributing money on a, on a weekly or semi-monthly basis, look at what your allocation is and buy a little bit more on some of those investments that are down a little bit. Let's talk about folks who are now nearing retirement. They don't have 30 years for the markets to recover. These are probably the most scared of investors. What do you say to them? Well, and it is scary. And, and that's something that you just we just all need to acknowledge. You read the headlines right now, and it's rumors of wars, pestilences. I mean, everything that you can imagine is going on. But be careful of that. If you go back and you take those same headlines, but you change the date on them instead of 2022, you often go 79, 82, 90, you know, 2000. A lot of these headlines are very, very similar. And just remember that these world events, number one, they do not destroy your investments, your economic wealth that you've created. So that's something that is very important to go and look at to make sure those allocations are set up correctly. The other thing is that your health insurances and the health of you is vitally important too. Make sure your health insurance, if you're transitioning into Medicare, that you have all of your health insurances dialed in. One of the biggest things that I see where people make a big mistake is they often don't transition or have adequate health insurance as they're transitioning from employment to retirement. And often some of these expenses really catch them. It's a surprise a little bit in terms of what they have to pay for deductibles, for medical surcharges with prescriptions, and get all of those dialed in. The third thing that I would just suggest that people look at is live your retirement in a year or two. Give it a test run for six months. See how it really works. You may find that you're not necessarily ready to live on that retirement budget. I always have people do it a six-month run, a six-month test, a couple of years before they retire to see if they're really ready to make that transition. Smart advice. I often say the same thing to uh, young married couples who are planning to have children. And when they do have a child, one of them will quit their job and become a stay-at-home parent. And I'm like, well, act like now as though that paycheck is gone. Because if you can't do it now as a test, how are you going to be able to do it later for real? And so, yeah, there's no reason to wait for retirement to begin to act like you're in retirement. And that's really good advice, Todd. One final area, those who are already retired, they are totally dependent on social security, a pension if they're lucky enough to have one, and whatever money they've accumulated in investments. And those investments are falling in value dramatically, putting real pressure. Just as the investments are able to produce less in income, they have to provide more because of inflation. This can really scare people in their 60s and 70s and 80s, given this economic environment. What do you tell them they ought to be doing with their investments? If you're in that category, that's a really tricky and it's a scary time right now. And so getting this done right, one, is mission critical. Um, if you haven't already, one of the best things that you can do is to meet with a fee-based fiduciary and build a retirement plan in terms of what's going on with your withdrawal rate. I often find that people are withdrawing too much money from their investments. There's other sources that we could start to pull some money from. For example, often in retirement, we at least advise people to have at least 12, 18 in a lot of cases, 24 months of, of cash on hand. In some situations, we can stop or at least decrease the amount of a withdrawal when your investments are fluctuating like this and live off your cash reserve for a couple of months um, so that you're not placing as much stress on the withdrawal from your investing. Number two, again, look at your allocation. You may find that just in this past year, last year was a really good year for investments. They did very well you may find that your allocation and your investments got a little too top heavy. It got a little too aggressive to what you're truly comfortable with. And in those situations, you can go in and make a few slight changes 
to make it to where it isn't as aggressive as it was last year. And again, the third thing to remember, and, and this is a very important thing, is to just stay balanced. Decreases and drops like this do not happen for forever. We've been talking with Todd Hillstead. He's executive director of financial planning at Edelman Financial Engines. Todd, you're in uh, Utah. You have colleagues all over the country. You're demonstrating pretty well that what you should do, how you should behave in an economic environment like this really depends on where you're at in life. There's a really big difference in behavior and strategy between someone in their late 20s and someone in their early 60s. And so wherever you're at in your path uh, of your lifeline, you really want to make sure you're talking with, as Todd said, a fiduciary financial advisor, a fee-based advisor who is serving your best interests. Todd, how would people reach you or colleagues of yours at Edelman Financial Engines? The best place would be to go to our website, edelmanfinancialengines.com. From there, you can click on a location that's close to you. And from there, find someone that would be willing to help. And, and there's anybody that would be willing to help at our firm. Whether you have amassed significant amounts of money, if you're just getting started, if you're massively in debt, it doesn't matter. Every single individual matters and deserves sound and rock solid financial advice. We'll help anybody that's willing to listen. But going to our website is a great source to find the person closest to you. EdelmanFinancialEngines.com. Todd Hillstead, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Rick, great to be with you. Todd and I actually spoke for almost 20 minutes. If you'd like to watch or listen or read the full conversation, just check us out at thetruthayf.com. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future. The Truth About Your Future is sponsored by Global X ETFs. Listeners to this show tune in every week to hear Rick Edelman and his guests talk about the personal finance topics that matter most. And if you're retired, or soon will be, you're no doubt listening for Rick's thoughts on retirement security and longevity. At Global X ETFs, we understand you may also be interested in opportunities to generate income, with interest rates still near historic lows despite an inflationary environment. Our approach to this challenge looks beyond what you might have considered using asset classes that include MLPs, REITs, preferreds, and dividend-paying stocks. We have been managing these types of income-oriented strategies for more than a decade, with solutions suited to a range of portfolio objectives. Explore our full range of ETFs, research and insights, and more at GlobalXETFs.com, or speak with your financial advisor to learn more. Meet Schwab Intelligent Income, a simple modern way to pay yourself from your portfolio. Overcome the complexity of income needs in retirement with automated tax smart withdrawals that you can start, stop, or adjust at any time without penalty. Plus, ongoing monitoring, so you'll always know where you stand. And since lower fees means more money for you to invest, you pay no advisory fee. Available with Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Visit schwab.com slash intelligent income, a modern approach to wealth management. Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? There's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, symbol BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. Welcome back. The Truth About Your Future continues. You know, we talk a lot about crypto. If you're looking for a financial advisor who's trained in digital assets, I've got the solution for you. I've created the Advisor Directory. This is a listing of financial advisors around the country who have attained their certificate in blockchain and digital assets, demonstrating their knowledge and fluency in this new asset class, and they can be helpful to you. You can reach these folks at the truth, AYF. 
thetruthayf.com. It's free, the advisor directory at thetruthayf.com. Time now for everybody's favorite segment of the program, Visit by My Wife, Jean Edelman. Jean is a student of the healing arts, Reiki, traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy, acupuncture, and of course, macrobiotic and plant-based cooking. Here's Jean. Hello, great to be with you this week. This week, I want to continue our conversation about taking care of our body. There's a very funny movie with Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep, Death Becomes Her. They have been given the fountain of youth. They've been told to take care of their body. But do they? No. They think that they're just immortal and they can do anything they want. Well, you know what? Life is not a movie. Life is about good self-care. We need to connect the dots with what we eat, our movement, our environment, our thoughts, with our health. It's all connected. So we're going to start with three small areas. The first is hydration. We really need to drink water. When we're dehydrated, our systems kind of get sluggish. We feel sluggish. It's so important. When we don't drink water, we crave sweets. It's a miracle. Drink water. You'll be surprised how much better you feel. My trick is that each day I fill a pitcher. And my goal is to drink that throughout the day. I usually stop by a certain time during the day so I can sleep through the night. But drink water. Hydration. Number one key to good health. The second is our sleep habits. So I want to talk about waking up in the morning And then our nighttime habits. So how many of us just, the alarm clock goes off and we jump out of bed? Like we haven't even collected our thoughts. Our mind and our body have not connected. We're we're lightheaded. We can't even think. We don't even know where we're going or what we're doing. I want us to start a better morning routine. As soon as we start to kind of wake up, let's do some deep breathing. Let's do some little stretches. See how our back feels. Stretch our feet down to the end of the bed. Take some deep breaths. Give our body and mind, you've just been sleeping. You've been unconscious for however many hours you sleep a night. You got to give your body a chance to connect so that you can move into the day together, mind and body. So add in the morning, just some nice deep breaths and some light stretches. Maybe if you like yoga, you could add a yoga stretch and then go brush your teeth and jump into whatever it is that you do in the morning. But give yourself, love yourself, care for yourself enough to slow it down in the morning so that you have your thoughts about you. You can think about your day. Well, maybe there's some areas that you could delegate. Maybe there's some things you don't have to do. If we give ourselves some time in the morning, we can figure it out. And the second piece is our nighttime routine. Very, very important. Our sleep area should be cool. It should be uncluttered. It shouldn't have a lot of electronics. You shouldn't be watching TV before bed. It should be dark. You should do some light stretches before bed. Maybe take a shower to wash the day off. Maybe rub your feet with some nice lotion to relax. We want to relax. We want to let the day kind of come off of us so that when we go into our sleep time, we're ready for it. Because you know what? Sleep, our body is restoring itself. When we shut down at night, Well, that's when our body's doing its biggest work. Our liver is detoxifying, our kidneys kind of rest, and then they kick back in. This is a time for our body to do its work so that we can stay in good health and be in balance. And so I want you to have a nicer, easier morning routine and a nice evening routine. And these are routines that nobody gets to deviate. You don't get to deviate. This is my routine. I need this for me. So whatever you need to do, 
you do it. But for me, you know, I've already walked the dog. The dishes are done. You know, everything's put away. I can start winding down for the day. And so this is important for ourselves. This is important for our self-care. And also do some light positive reading, some inspirational reading before we go to bed. The third piece of our good health and our self-care is movement. Are we moving during the day? I know with COVID, we were doing a lot of Zooms and now we're kind of in a hybrid, but hopefully we have kept our movement practice. Are we getting outside? Have we started a yoga class or Tai Chi? Are we just getting up and walking around outside or inside wherever we can? Maybe after each meeting, if we're doing Zoom, get up, swing your arms, walk around the desk, get some water, have a little snack so that you're restoring yourself and you're ready for whatever is about to come next. Don't just go boom, 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 boom meetings all day. Not good, not healthy, not even nice for the people in your life because then you're so tired and so done at the end of the day, you have nothing left to give them. So let's pace ourselves. Let's put movement in our day to keep us balanced and feeling good. So we're going to put on our website just a little flyer of some nice yoga poses. So you can go to the truthayf.com, check out the flyer. So just to recap, we want to drink water. We want to add a nicer morning wake-up routine. We want to enhance our nighttime routine. And we want to make sure we've got some good, healthy movement every day. And so my word of the week is care. C is for create. Create your personal image of what good health is and have the confidence that you can make these changes. Small little changes every day add up to good balanced health. A is for aspire. Aspire for more. Better health is possible. Be patient with ourselves, but be consistent. The R is for radiant. We will glow with good health when we're hydrated, when we're rested, and we're flexible. When we put clean, healthy, whole, plant-based food into the equation, there's no stopping us. And E is for educate. Educate and empower. Empower ourselves. Read. Do some research. Do and find what we need to do every day to feel great. It's the pebble in the pond, the pebble in the pond of self-care, of balance, of a good, happy life. That's what we want to put out there. So connect the dots, connect the dots to our mind and our body. We only get one of these. So let's make it the best we can. Have a great week, everyone. If you're enjoying Jean's words of the week, you can get a list of them and all of her segments at the truth, AYF.com. What do all the greatest innovations have in common? Agents of innovation, ordinary people who shape the future by putting their money behind the right ideas. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100. So you don't have to be an inventor to help create what's next to come. Be an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, carefully read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in the prospectus at Invesco.com. Invesco Distributors, Inc. This is a call to the self-starters, to the self-made, and the self-sufficient. It's time to declare a new kind of independence, because Edelman Financial Engines is here to provide tailored investment solutions for your kind of wealthy. You should expect more from your wealth advisors. Our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize winning research, and our planners don't sell products to earn commissions. And because we're here for those who question the answers, we model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. So no matter where you're going next, see what we can build for you. 
Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash TAYF to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines, built for those who built themselves. Thanks for joining me on the show this weekend. Remember, if you haven't yet viewed my new master class, it's available to you for free at thetruthayf.com. The Truth About Crypto, my very first master class. You can view it free at thetruthayf.com. See you next week. Bye-bye. 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 I'm sorry, what? What part didn't you understand? The buh or the bye? Bye Bye-bye. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman has been brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. As crypto grows, Bitwise believes everyone should have a simple and familiar way to access it. Bitwise makes crypto clear. Bitwiseinvestments.com. And by Global X ETFs. For more than a decade, Global X ETFs has been dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. Learn more at GlobalXETFs.com. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. Invesco.com slash QQQ. Stay tuned for Everyday Wealth with Soledad O'Brien and Gene Chatsky from Edelman Financial Engines. EverydayWealth.com backslash radio. EFE and the truth about your future with Rick Edelman are unaffiliated entities. Get the truth about your future every weekend with Rick Edelman. It's the truth AYF.com.